Welcome to EP Daily. Today on the show, we unleash an army of mechs in the rundown. Plus, Charlie Brown is back, and we've got a behind the scenes of the new Peanuts movie. And then, surprise, surprise, Batman finds himself on the toy table. Batman. Also coming up, we solve some mysteries in Gabriel Knight's Sins of the Fathers. Scott and I head to Staten Island and much more today on EP Daily. Brought to you by EV Games. I'm your host, Marissa Roberto, bringing you the latest in everything cool every single day. There are less than 420 shopping days until Christmas 2016, so you've got plenty of time to sit back and enjoy the rundown. It looks like big giant swords are becoming one of Japan's biggest exports. Square Enix has unveiled Nier Automata, a sequel to the 2010 action RPG Nier. The original game wasn't a huge hit, but has developed a large cult following that impressed Square Enix enough to greenlight the sequel. Unlike their first game, Nier Automata is being developed by Platinum Games, the same studio behind Bayonetta and Vanquish. There will once again be plenty of swordplay against massive enemies, which should be that much better now that Platinum is on board. Expect to see Nier Automata next year. And the only thing more deadly than a giant sword is a mech suit. Titanfall developer Respawn Entertainment has announced that it's working on multiple Titanfall games for smartphones and tablets. No specific titles have been revealed, but the first games are slated to roll out next year. The Titanfall mobile games are being made as part of a partnership between Respawn Entertainment and mobile juggernaut Nexon, which likely means the games will be free to play. It remains to be seen if the multiplayer mech madness of Titanfall will work well on mobile platforms. Purists will be happy to know that Respawn is also working on a AAA sequel, which is in the works for the Xbox One, PS4, and PC. That's it for the rundown. Now look who it is to join me. It's the one and only Scott C. Jones Hello, here. Hello, Marissa Roberto. Let's Bye. talk about some uh, news Let, subjects. Well, let's talk about Titanfall first, oh. because I don't think you like Titanfall as much as I like Titanfall. Well, this is the thing. There's no mm -hmm. single player in Titanfall, which makes it easier for me to just completely ignore it. Now they're bringing it to the iOS platform, which I really don't understand. I don't want to play first-person shooters. They do work sometimes. They really do. And I feel like this is might be okay. There's been a lot of development with iOS games and they've gotten so much better over the years that I don't see why they would screw this up. I had a lot of fun with Titanfall and if I could play it mobile... I mean the thing that gives me hope for this is the fact that there are more and more controller options for yeah. the iOS platform. I see Victor Lucas using a controller all the time. He's got a different one almost every day. There's new controllers coming out all the yeah. time. They get a little better and better. I don't know if this is going to actually be a first person shooter of Titan, Titanfall. Yeah. I think it's going to be a different kind of game probably, but if it is a first person shooter, I think they are going to start to work better in the future. Yeah. I'm still going to play all first person shooters exclusively at home until the technology is there, but it, they're getting closer all the time. So Not this is what happens. Not only are you going to play them at home, but you're only going to play them if they have a single player experience. Yes. Yeah. I okay. want the single player. Tell me a little story. That's all I want. Well, he wants people. Listen, I think there's going to be a story in the new Nier. Yes. Uh, this looks like something that's right up your alley because you love Platinum Games. I do love Platinum. Yeah. I'm so partial to Bayonetta and Bayonetta 2. I, I don't think they're perfect games, not by a long shot, but what Platinum does well, they're doing here for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, what you get is a lot of style, you get a lot of great sword play, you get a lot of interesting gameplay, you got enemies that you can fight. Anything Platinum does, I cannot turn away. I have to play it, I have to finish it, I have to see it all the way through. And you like a lot of violence, I'm the opposite of that. So am I excited about this one? No, not really, but I do appreciate Platinum games, of course, and I did enjoy Bayonetta when we played on the Wii U. So yes, I will play this. Maybe I'll review it with you, Jones. Uh, okay, well, okay. you threw down the gauntlet, I'll, I'll accept. <laughs> you will pick it up. Listen, we've got to go now to behind the scenes of the new Peanuts movie. So what's great about Snoopy is he has a rich imagination. And as he watches Charlie Brown struggle, he takes some of those ideas into his fantasy adventures where we see him as the flying ace going against the Red Baron. And he has this similar quest to, to best that Red Baron. And we find at the end that he's still there going, curse you, Red Baron. To see for the first time really why Snoopy 
things out of typewriter and types. You know, we, we, we see them in the comic strip typing, but we never really know why. How did that happen? It sort of explains in this movie how that came about. It also explains why he's chasing the Red Baron. You know, we know that for 50 years, 45 years, he's been chasing this Red Baron. He's never, never been able to catch him. But the movie sort of explains why he's chasing him. <laughs> the Peanuts characters transcend because human nature doesn't change and what what my husband pulled on was the insecurities the fears we all have the little happinesses that we try to celebrate shoot it Charlie Brown shoot it how about that Charlie Brown you're the star of the school now Peanuts really has stood the test of time because it's about people it's about characters, it's about emotions, it's about the things that we all go through, and those things don't change. It's not making cultural references, it's really about the human interaction and the insecurities of being a kid and being an adult. It's not often you get the opportunity to start over with a clean slate. This time, things will be different. Steve was fanatical about going into the comic strip, using the comic strip, and my dad's line as really the basis of this movie. And whenever they had a question, they always went back to the comic strip. Well, first and foremost, this is a feature film in 2015. You know, from my perspective, that means we're painting on a bigger canvas than any of the previous work that's been done in Peanuts. And we embrace that. We want to be true to these characters, true to who they are in personality, but deliver an experience that is big and action-packed. It's not just a collection of the funniest bits from the comic strip that we've loved through 50 years. Uh, it really is a story that we get to follow Charlie Brown, have an emotional investment, and have a journey that pays off in a big way with a nice thematic heart. Whoa! Ah, ah. <sighs> Good grief. You know, watching that story, I gotta tell you, Marissa, what? you remind me of uh, Pigpen. That's that dirty one. He's always got a cloud around him. He I, always stinks. I thought you were gonna say Lucy. Nope. Pigpen. Okay, that's really nice, Jones. Don't go anywhere, because after the break, I join Jose with a review of Gabriel Knight, Sins of Our Fathers. Did you have another nightmare last night? Yes, because having nightmares is what I do. Look, Chaba, I was just on my way to pay you back, and I got a little sidetracked. It's not my fault. Ah, you you need solo. Hi, my name's David Collins. I'm a Star Wars voice actor, Star Wars host, sound designer. Uh, I worked at LucasArts for years, and I have a lot of Star Wars memories. I think probably my favorite Star Wars memory of all time is in the summer of 1983. I had already seen Return of the Jedi three times. It was very hot in Northern California. My grandparents were visiting, and suddenly, everyone wanted to go to the movies to cool off, and they all voted to go see Mr. Mom. And I threw a fit because my seven-year-old brain couldn't understand why anyone would want to go see Mr. Mom. If given the choice, you go see Star Wars. That's why they build movie theaters, right? So my grandfather took me while the rest of the family went to go see Michael Keaton. No offense, you're great. But went to go see Return of the Jedi for the fourth time. And it's one of my most fond Star Wars memories because it was me and my grandfather watching Jabba the Hutt get wasted out in Tatooine. Uh, sorry, not drunk, but you know what happened. You've seen the movie, I hope. But anyway, incredible, incredible experience. Ugh, I can't bear to watch. <laughs> one of the reasons why it's emotionally one of my favorite movies, of course I love all of them, but Return of the Jedi always has a special place in my heart. If you want more about Star Wars, you can find me on youtube.com slash thecomlink or on Twitter at, at David W. Collins. Hope to see you at another Star Wars celebration or a Comic-Con like this, and uh, may the Force be with you. Star Wars! Star Wars! Oh, MG, you love it so much. It's coming soon. Buy your tickets now. And listen, science fact, Jose Sanchez has chemistry with pretty much everyone on the show. Sophia, Ben Silverman, uh, Victor Lucas, lots of chemistry there. Uh, but does he have chemistry with Marissa Roberto? Here they are, reviewing Gabriel Knight, Sins of Our Fathers. EP's mobile coverage is brought to you by Gameloft, makers of Asphalt 8 Airborne, which you can play on your Android or iOS device for free right now. A rider has a certain obligation to his readers, you know. Gabriel, you know you'll never put him in your book. Your main character is a female orthodontist. Shout out to Victor Lucas for giving us this game assignment. This one is called Gabriel Knight, Sins of the Fathers. This is a 20th anniversary edition. So, yes, when you jump into this game, yeah, it looks really old. It does. It looks 20 years old. 
first I was impressed though, because I was like, wow, there seems to be a lot to do. This yeah. guy has a lot on his plate, and the animation in the beginning kind of looks cool. And then I realized that it was 20 years ago this game came out, and I thought, holy smokes, this is cool. I'm so happy that we're jumping into something like this, especially because it's in New Orleans. It's like New Orleans. New Orleans is that draw that I like, uh, you know, that gambit draw. But then you start playing it, and you realize this game sucks. Game Sook so bad, oh my god, I hate it so much. Uh, That's well, exactly uh, what I was thinking while I was playing this game. I was one of those people that played this game in, back in 99. No. This was a Sierra Hold game up. that came out. Really? I know. It sounds like I'm actually telling them the truth, but I'm not. Okay. I did not play this game in, back in 99, and then now it's back. That Southern draw is definitely there. So yeah. Gabriel Knight, all of a sudden, murders start happening. There's a whole lot of that hoodoo. There's a lot of that voodoo. The hoodoo. So there is. You got the souks, I got the hoodoo. Man, you heard the word voodoo come up so much while playing this game. It's just so annoying. It's like nails in the You know a what it reminded board. me of? What? The doo doo. Okay. Well, yeah, because that's exactly what this game feels like. Good morning. You look like hell. Did you have another nightmare last night? Yes. Because having nightmares is what I do, apparently. Seventh damn night in a row. So what we're doing here is kind of like a point and click. It, no, it's definitely a point and click. But there's the little map that you click on the side on your iPad, and you're just like, here are the 25 things you can interact with. Yeah. And you're like, uh, why can't there just be like four? Right. Because I right. get to the point. Because most of the things that you're interacting with don't mean anything. They can't do get up on the balcony. For you. Can't open that door. Yeah. Can't talk to that person. No. They look busy. Yeah. This place is closed until later. Exactly. Place, like, oh my God. What, what do I do? I do? Go to journal. Go to hints. It'll tell you. That's where you go. Go to the police station. Talk to the cops. Get some pictures. Uncover the earth. Go back to the church. Go to the church. Church looks pretty. Look at that stained glass. That's hot. Looks in HD now. Great. Yeah, Been waiting 20 years like, to see an HD. Right. And then try to get this cop to move away from his bike so you can get the coordinates of the crime scene so you can go to the crime scene. Why are you going to the crime scene, bro? But I don't care about this character at all. There's nothing that makes me want to be him, be around him, help him at all. He's such a freaking womanizer. I can't even stand it. It's supposed to be funny. It's not funny at all. There's nothing funny about this guy. He sucks. There's no personality here at all. Like, I can't... Wh why? Why am I playing this game? I don't understand. Why is this a 20th anniversary edition? I don't get it. Who played this game when it first came out? I don't know what the appeal is here. I really want to go to New Orleans, but this game is making me want to stay far, far away. No, just stay away from your iPad. Oh, just stay away from my That's iPad. That's the lesson learned here. Gotcha. Well, there's a graphic novel in here, too, and it tells Which... you when you jump into it that you shouldn't really read it until you get to Chapter 3 in the game. Yeah. I'm like, well, what? Okay. I, wanted, I wanted to check out the comic, so I did. I checked it out. Right. It's pretty cool. But was the game not spoiled for you? No, not All really. Right. So you can read the graphic novel, too. I don't really feel like this is worth anyone's time, unfortunately. And I kind of wish that the port didn't happen at all. Jose, what are you scoring? Gabriel Knight sins with his father. Giving this game a tree. Oh, man, yeah. It is definitely a three. So chemistry, I think, is there. What's it like to work with Jose Sanchez? Well, he's like one of those coin-operated machines, yes. except instead of coins you put in sandwiches, you <sighs> see you pop in a sandwich and he's ready to go. So if you're going to work with him, bring bags of sandwiches, yeah. Ben and Sophia and Victor Lucas. That's right. And listen, Gabriel Knight, Sins of Our Father's 20th Anniversary Edition is out on Steam now. That's right. Don't go anywhere, because after the break, Victor Lucas has got his toy table. Toy table! Batman. Welcome back to EP Daily. Don't adjust the color on your TV sets. It's time for the toy table. I've got something a little bit different here today because I am not really a statue guy. I'm an action figure guy. I like having posable characters and figures. Most of them are made out of plastic. But DC uh, has built something really cool with their Batman black and white line. All of these statues are based on artists that they have in the comic books. They make a, uh, a rendering of the sort of character model that they have from the pages of the books into a very articulated, almost in motion, almost ready to do the action type of pose with all of their sort of Batman creations. I've got a, um, a Frank Quitely Batman here. Frank Quitely is a terrific artist in the DC Comics universe. He does Batman almost as if you would see him on the street. It's a very uh, earthy kind of look to his character. You can see the boots sagging a little bit and uh, the costume kind of sort of fitting in the in the spots on, on Batman's body, the kind of way that you'd think you'd see it if you saw somebody wearing a Batman costume in real life. Paul Pope is a lot more stylized. He's got a sort of grungy, kind of street-based Batman character. This is his Batman from uh, Batman 100, which is a fantastic book, great series. Alex Ross is also incredibly realistic, very painterly, his, all of his covers and his 
renderings of Batman out there, and I love this Alex Ross figure. Uh, but this is my newest addition to my collection, and it's not very big. I'm very choosy with my statues, but I love this. This is uh, the Batgirl, and it's created by Cameron Stewart and Babs Tarr, and this is kind of a more current Batgirl that we're seeing in the DC Comics right now. I love that she's got, uh, you know, utility belts that look like they would actually exist in the real world. I like her kind of cute but tough kind of attitude that she's got, that smirk in her face. It's a very cool, very cool design for the Batgirl costume. It's not just a, you know, Cupid doll, let's uh, make her a, a, a sexy kind of uh, heroine or anything like that. She's just got, uh, uh, you know, a real sense of class and a real sense of style, and I love this design. Yeah, and I thought that the sculpt and the stance of this particular statue was definitely something that I had to have in my collection. But now for something completely different, let's take a look at Staten Island Summer. You're leaving us? Ma, oh. I told you he's going to Harvard. College? You know, college is a scam, right? The dun -duns. Yeah. Our summer is coming to a close, but before it ends, Scott thought, why not take a look at another summer-themed movie? This one's called Staten Island Summer. I feel like he just wanted to watch it, though, because Ashley Green was in it. I do like uh, her. Her hair is bleached now. She's blonde. She is on the cover of this thing. Like uh, You can tell that they wanted people to click yeah. onto it on Netflix because they just show a woman's torso oh, and then unbuttoning her shorts. Netflix. Like She's about to take off her shorts. You're going to see her bikini bottoms. That's very exciting for a lot of people. We should click on it and watch. Yeah. Yeah. And then what happens when you click on and watch this thing, it's just a big disappointment all, right. all around. No, really, you wanted to watch this thing, and I, I expected did. some entertainment, so, especially from the cast of Saturday Night Live. And so, if Lauren Michaels is producing this thing, I expect to laugh, at least. So, listen, if yeah. you pick something to be on the show, then it, you're responsible for it, apparently. That's yeah. what Marissa's trying to lay down <laughs> on me here. Listen, this looked like a, a lot of fun to me. I watched the trailer for it. I thought there's potential here. And yes, I did see Ashley Green, and she was unbuttoning her shorts and getting ready to pull those down and then there's a bikini underneath uh -huh. so Netflix you have my number also I like celebrating anything that's on Netflix I mean it's debuting here it's not in theaters you can just watch it at home at your leisure mm -hmm. and I like stories about young kids having a good time one last time in summer this is about <laughs> a bunch of lifeguards in the island of Staten Island there's a lot of Italiana in this movie here yeah played by you know people that aren't even Italian this is a new cast from SNL and I love a lot of these people in the new cast I think they're so so funny and they're given nothing to work with here absolutely nothing there's no humor at all I didn't laugh once not one time maybe maybe when Fred Armisen shows up with his torch his blowtorch yeah he's about to take he's out a hornet's some, nest some hornet's nest over yeah. the course of the movie Die! Die! okay remember A B C Always be safe. I mean, mostly I wanted to see New York in the summertime. I wanted to see Staten Island. I've taken the ferry there a few times. You should definitely do it if you're visiting the New York area. This is one of the young writers on Saturday Night Live called Reese Thomas. And I wanted to like uh, Ashley Green's character in this, Vincent Pastore, who's from The Sopranos. You recognize him, you know him. He was big pussy on the show. Yeah. And he's back again. But everybody's playing kind of a low-grade version of a cliche that they've played before in another movie. But the biggest affront here is <laughs> yeah. the one that you want to talk about. Well, Graham Phillips, you recognize him from The Good Wife. He plays the son in The Good Wife, and I absolutely love him in that. And I was really charmed by him when we first started no, watching this movie as well. he vanishes completely. Yes, absolutely, because you start to realize that, okay, he's playing the Michael Sarah character, and then you have Zach Perlman playing the Jonah Hill character yeah. in Superbad, and that movie is infinitely better. That's yeah, true. While you're watching this movie, yeah. you can't help but think of other actors who might do a better job in these parts. This is the B team when what you really want is the A-team version of this movie. I do think there's some interesting things here. I do think there's some fun and irreverent energy here, but it never really adds up to anything, and so you just kind of watch it and wince at the same time. Watch and wince. Because watch it, and, and wince. wince. Yes, I get it, but it's all just so silly. Even their problems are, are very silly. They want to throw a party, but they can't throw a party, and then all of a sudden they, they, they lose, their, they lose right. their alcohol <laughs> and their drugs and their, and their fireworks. Yep. We are still gonna have this party. Your description of it is actually, it sounds fun. This is a little bit of a travesty and a tragedy here on Netflix. What are you gonna give Staten Island Summer? This movie is such a disappointment, it gets a three. Yeah, I'm gonna go down to the one on this one. Oh. Thank you, Bruce and Scott. You look like you had some fun there. Now stick around, we're coming back with a Twitter question of the day right after this. If you want more EP, go to our website, epn.tv, for bonus content and full episodes. We're also on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to EP Daily to 
time now for the best part of today's show and every show. It is a Twitter question yes. of the day. This one comes from Vince Shuley. He says, I'm getting sworn in as a Canadian citizen next week. Congratulations. Wow. What quintessential Canadian game should I play to celebrate Scott C. Jones being an American in Canada? What do you say? Well, the first thing you have to do if you're getting sworn in as a Canadian citizen, yeah. learn all the words to O Canada. That's very important. So you got to know all those. And uh, the next thing you need to do, though, I, I think and there's so many great Canadian games. For sure. Made. We have great developers here. Yeah. We have, you know, Ubisoft has a huge operation in uh, on the east coast of Canada, but on the west coast of Canada, Canada. We have Edmonton, Alberta. We've got uh -huh. our old friends at BioWare. They've made the Mass Effect series. That's true. I think that's a great game to play. And also Next Level is here yeah. in Vancouver. Luigi's they, Mansion. Luigi's Mansion they made. And they also did the great Captain America game, which was underrated. So I think any of those games are OK, Canada. I think it's also important to note that playing a FIFA game, which is also made here in Vancouver, mm -hmm. is a good way to go as well. Plus, it's very worldly. Anyway, we have more recommendations for you on our website, epn.tv. You can get caught up on all the shows there as well. That's it for today's episode, but coming soon to EP Daily, we take an undercover look at the new James Bond movie, Spectre. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye. EP would like to thank its sponsors, Nintendo, Xbox. Ah, oh, 007. Q. Please excuse the mess. Everything's a little bit up in the air, what with the changes and all. A couple of things to get through. Shall we get started? You must know by now that the double O program is officially dead. <laughs> Which leads me to speculate exactly why you came. So, James, why did you come? I came here to kill you. And I thought you came here to die. Well, it's all a matter of perspective. <laughs>